Donnez-moi à manger. J'ai faim. J'ai faim. S'il vous plaît, monsieur. Merde On est bon, mes amis Sir. Who's Lady Farthingdale, you friggin' fop? I must protest, sir. And please, call these ruffians out of the church. Shoot him, Smithers. Lady Farthingdale, sir. Worth a bit of money, I don't wonder. Lord Farthingdale's a lucky bastard, eh, Marshal, mon ami? <laughs> Maybe. But that cape of hers is like an over-rich sauce, which conceals the true taste of the dish. Stripper, Kelly. I'll do it myself. Oh. What is your husband's full name, madame? Sir Augustus Farthingdale. Is he a general? He's a colonel, like you. What's your <laughs> lip, my lady? If indeed you are the lady. Look more like Portuguese to me. Here's my wedding ring. Tis our initials engraved. Here's your proof. How long have you been married then? Six months. Ooh. So the shine's still on it, eh? What brings you up here to this church? The statue of our Holy Mother in this church is said to have special powers. I am. Um... I came to pray for a child. Lord Farthingale still firing blanks, eh? Oh. Do you mind, Missy? I'll give you a full-blown belly by sundown. Madame, is your husband rich? Very. Well, think how much he'll give us to get her back. A lot. See? And how much of your belly is full by my friend Hakeswell here? Nothing. So you must leave her alone, and our friend who we found yesterday, until we have the gold. You must find another chicken for your pot. This one's mine. Send it to the inn. Is this how the English treat their allies? We follow no flag, missy. English, frog, Portuguese. We fight for ourselves now. Good. Madame, you will dine with me tonight. I am cooking poulet with oil and garlic and some fine red wine. Good morning, sir. I have a ransom note now. They want me to send Sharp with the gold. Why did the scum want me to send Sharp, Nan? Damned if I know, sir. You'll be damned if you don't find out, Nan! Damn it, Nan. What is the point of having you as head of confidential agents if you don't know why they want me to send Sharp? That's only one of two things I don't understand, sir. The other is why you're taking so much trouble over Sir Augustus Farthingdale, a fop fresh out of England, seeking glory in Spain with the help of a few hacks at horse guard. At least you seem to know something about Sir Augustus. Six weeks here and the silly old sod lets his young wife go gallivanting up north to some village and far too close to the frontier for comfort. Now a gang of deserters have grabbed her, promised to diddle her to death unless he gives them a ransom of gold. Well, he's got the guineas. He's a rich man, sir. Let him go himself. This letter is fresh from London, Nan. 
It seems Sir Augustus has been appointed His Majesty's Special Military Envoy to the government of Portugal. Our allies know. Anything we want, we have to ask Sir Augustus. Oh, God. Sir Augustus will be here within the hour. He'll want to know how I propose to get his wife back in his bed. Hear me, Nan? Oh, I hear you, sir. Then hear me well, Nan. I expect the frogs to attack any day. I need the Portuguese to rally round. I need every friend I can muster at the court in Lisbon. Sir Augustus Farthingdale is the one man who can help or hinder me. I think Sir Augustus will hound me hard to get his wife back. So I shall hound you hard. And you, Nan? I shall hound Captain Sharp, sir. <laughs> You stay down, sir. Stay down. Come on, Colonel. Come on, sir. Here I am. How are you doing, sir? Name? Rank? Sergeant Patrick Harper, sir. 95th Rifles. I heard you swearing, Sergeant Harper. How dare you swear in front of an officer? Oh, Jay, I'm very, very sorry, sir. Must just have sort of slipped out, so it did. Who are these scruffy savages? They are chosen men, sir. Picked out for their special skills. That's why they wear the white cords of courage, sir. Yes, but not for much longer, they won't. And nor will you have these stripes, Sergeant Harper. As soon as I see Lord Wellington, I'm going to have all of you put on a charge for disorderly conduct. Beg your pardon, sir. These men were acting under my orders, sir. Your orders, sir? And who are you to give orders? I'm an officer, sir. You are an officer, sir? Yes, sir. Captain Sharp, 95th Rifles, sir. Sharp? Sharp, yes, I heard something about you in Lisbon. Are you the fellow that Wellington raised from the rank, Sharp? Yes, sir. Yes, well, I always thought it was a bad idea, and now I've got proof of it. When I see Lord Wellington, I'm going to speak to him about your conduct, Sharp. Is that you, Sir Augustus? Major Nan. Lord Wellington's staff, sir. I take it you are Sir Augustus Farley there. I am he, Nan. I should like to complain about the conduct of one of your officers. Lord Wellington is waiting for you, sir. He's most anxious to allay your anxiety about that matter you alluded to in your notes, sir. Well, I should like to uh, bathe and change first. Where is my tent, Nan? Last but one on the right, sir. I have water on the boil for you. See that colonel, Sharp? That colonel came here to make you a major. Would you believe that? No, sir. <laughs> right hand up to God, Sharp. That's your left hand, sir. I swear to God, Sharp. You mean I miss being made major? Maybe not. Report to Wellington's tent at seven. Why? What shall I say when that colonel goes on about my behavior, sir? Act like a man, Sharp. Crawl, eat humble pie, beg. But don't worry about that for now. Right now, what you have to worry about is how to get those horses from the rocket troop. Well, maybe I'll get lucky, sir. Maybe one of those rockets will blow me to kingdom come. That's the spirit, Sharp.
consistent, Lieutenant. Ten salvos and you've missed every time. Let's have those horses, Harper. Uh, please, sir. One last salvo. Tell you the truth, Lieutenant. I'm dirty, deaf and damned if I want to see another rocket. Very well. One last salvo. But if you miss, we'll have your horses. Come on, Pat. Sir! Where are you going, sir? Where I can get a bit of peace. The barn. Rocket troop, reload! Sergeant I met at Badahoff, Billy Smith. He used to be based at Shorncliffe Camp where they made these Congreve rockets. Mm -hmm. Well, he said they're grand going away from you. But the right devil's coming at you. <laughs> Rocket troop, prepare to fire! Raider, come back! Light, fuses! Stand aside! Mr. Teresa. <laughs> Bye, Mr. Teresa. <laughs> Tell Gilliand he's got a reprieve on the Rockies and he can keep his horses. Sir. <laughs> I missed you. How's our daughter? How's Antonia? Free spirit. Like her mother. <laughs> what, what do you notice first about her? Her eyes. She sees everything. She'll be sharpshooter, like you. Really, my lord, this fellow Sharp is almost five minutes late. Not to mention his bad manners this morning. I really must insist that you speak to him. What? Oh, I beg your pardon, Colonel. Ned and I are engrossed in your book. Practical instructions to the young officer in the art of warfare, with special reference to the engagements now proceeding in Spain. My congratulations, Colonel. Given that you wrote this work before your arrival in Spain, it shows remarkable confidence, what? Oh, absolutely. Amazing, Sir Augustus. Yes, well, I very much appreciate your kind words, my lord. But my wife weighs heavily on my mind, sir. <coughs> my lord. Buenas tardes, my lord. Good day, madam. Allow me to present Colonel Sir Augustus Farthingdale, His Majesty's military representative in Lisbon. Colonel Commandante Moreno, commander of the Spanish guerrillas across the border. She is to take part in the operation we propose. And Captain Sharp of the 95th. Here your servant, ma'am. Captain Sharp and I have met. You're late, sir, and I cannot abide unpunctuality. I'm sorry I'm late, my lord. The inspection of the rocket battery ran to a full hour, sir. I am not happy you did not give me my horses, Sharp. You think there may be something in these rockets, Sharp? Not as to accuracy, sir. But they play merry hell with the morale of poorly led men, sir. The sound is shocking. Scared you, did they? I was terrified, sir. Do you, uh, do you think Captain Sharp's the right man to send with the ransom, sir? He won't cut and run if somebody lets off a gun, will he? Who is this fool? I have not come here, my lord, 
to listen to Captain Sharp explaining about his rockets. What about my wife, sir? You have the ransom? 500 golden guineas. Good. The deserters have demanded the gold be delivered by Captain Sharp. Oh, I wonder why, sir. It's probably because he knew one of the ruffians when he was a private soldier. But that's what comes of uh, raising from the ranks. Uh, personally, my lord, I don't hold with it. My lord, if I may speak. Sir Augustus is probably correct in speculating that whoever asked for me served under me in the ranks. I was a sergeant and a stickler for duty. So it's fair to assume that whoever it is wants to settle a score and slit my throat. But if Sir Augustus does not trust me, then I am more than willing to step down and let him take the gold himself, sir. Well, I am willing to accept Captain Sharp as a messenger, if you are, my lord. Let's have it, Nan. We're here. Adradus is here. Three days' march across rough country. The Spanish call it the Gateway of God because it controls a pass between Portugal and Spain. We can send an escort with the gold as far as the river. We'll see a black flag flying from a tree and the escort must stop there. Sharp and one other man will go on with the gold, carrying personal arms only, Sharp. Any tricks? And they promise to slit Lady Farthingdale's throat, sir. Among other things. Um, that's it, my lord. What do you say, Sharp? We leave at dawn, sir. That seems satisfactory, Colonel. Well, naturally, I had hoped to go myself. No, Sir Augustus, these dogs will merely make you a hostage and raise the ransom. Well, that being so, I have certain concerns as to the correct conduct of Captain Sharp and his men. My wife is a lady. I must ask you to impress on Captain Sharp the need to observe proper standards which are not necessarily his by birth. How dare he speak of Captain Sharp in such a fashion, my lord? We Morenos are of the blood. We know who is a man of manners and who is a man of the mouth. And you, Sir Augustus, are a man of the mouth. Take my advice and shut it before somebody shuts it for you. How dare you, madam? Sir Augustus has a point, Sharp. You and your men can be a bit rough and ready. Sir Augustus has written a book about the proper conduct of the Spanish campaign. I suggest you study it tonight, Sharp. Full of good things. Listen. The men during the march shall keep their files. No indecent language or noise to be allowed. Be sure to read that particular part to the chosen men after prayers tonight, Sharp. Wild horses wouldn't stop me, sir. Don't talk about horses, Sharp. Dismiss! If you were a man, I would call you out, force you to fight a duel, and kill you. Close thing, that, sir. They call her the needle. Don't ask me why. Am I in danger? Escort Colonel Farthingdale to his quarters, would you? Good day, sir. Sharp kept his head. Wants to make major, sir. Hmm. Any chance I'll hand her over? None. Once they've got the goal, they'll hump her to death and damn all we can do about it. And Sharp, I feel sorry for, sir. Oh, where's he gone? Hang on a minute, I can see it. Here it is. <laughs> Go on, and the bird it did fly in, and the bird it did fly out, just above her lily white knee. Oh, go on, son. You're going to be the help to the bird in the bush. Here's a help to no, the hard leader. No. For we tarry here all day to drink down the sun. Let us tarry here and drink down the moon. Green tops. Short barrels. The bloody fighting 95th. First in the field and the last out of it.
Listen to this, lads. Soldiers should not form liaisons with local women in a warm climate. <laughs> Heard you gave Ramona a fat belly, Harper. Well done. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Feels kind of funny being a father. Feels fine to me. No, I'm not much of a father. Anyway, don't call it after me. No, I won't. Have a gog at Sir Fartingdale's tent, sir. <laughs> Fartingdale, Harper. Yeah, well, whatever. He's spreading money around like snuff at a wake trying to dig up the dirt about you, sir. He even had a word with me about you and Teresa, so he did. And what did you tell him, Arthur? I told him you were stone mad about Miss Teresa, so he did. He seemed very happy to hear that, and he rewarded me with a silver shilling. Good. Well, give it to Ramona. I'd say she's earned it. First your fat belly, then her own. Good night. Good night, sir. Good night, Miss Teresa. Good night. Hey, you men, will it be too much trouble to ask you to move your big, fat arses out of the way and give Mr. Sharp a bit of privacy? I'll trade you a Voltaire and a filthy book by the Marquis de Sade for your Sir Augustus, sir. Done, Harris. Hey, bring it back. Of course, sir. Good night, sir. Good night, Harris. Good night. Christmas in two weeks. Took call to take it off, I think. Well, take it off in bed, eh? I hate that fellow Farthingdale. Aye, he misses his wife, that's all. Mm. Feel the same way about you sometimes when you go off. Mm. Feel that way about little Antonia now. Miss her. She must be very beautiful, his wife. Beautiful? How do you know? Well, because... Because he was happy, you were mad about him. Mm -hmm. He was afraid you would fall in love with his wife. Keep my mind like a rocket, Teresa. Too fast for me. Mm -hmm. I never know where you'll land. <laughs> but is it true that you are mad about me? Uh, Harp is a bit hard of hearing. I said I was mad at you. <laughs> no wonder Harper was so happy. Because he would get a child? No. Because he got a shilling. <laughs> 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 What is it, Isabella? It's not to look. Don't worry. I'm married to a French colonel. I fell in love before this war began. He's a brave man. He'll come soon. I know he will. I'm married to an English colonel. 
coward. And he won't come at all. Bring back my wife safely, and you'll get a guinea apiece. Any complaints about your conduct, and you'll get the gallows. Mind your manners when you see my wife, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Carry on, Captain Chop. Do you feel sorry for him still? Let's go, Harper. <laughs> Rifles! Trail! Arms! Right face! Quick! March! Well, and the view to you, Spanish ladies. Farewell, and the view to you, ladies of Spain. For we've received orders to sail home to England. But I know in some time we'll return once again. And here's a good elf to the 95th rifle, the first in the field. And the last from the fray, when Bonaparte's armies are banished and beaten, they'll talk of the 95th winning the day. Welcome to my parlor, Sharpie. No wonder Alice reads Voltaire. Listen. Donnez pas pour les gros battalions, mais pour ceux qui tirent les murs. God is not on the side of the big battalions, but of the best shots. <laughs> not bad for a frog, eh? <laughs> You think these deserters will hand over Lady Fathingdale to you tomorrow, Richard? Of course they will. As soon as they get the gold. You are a bad liar, Richard. So I'll always be faithful. If not, you'll easily find out.
see what I see. You know, sometimes I wish I was blind. Looks like a bloody army to me. Not just that. Look at the uniforms. Good God. Those French with them. Spanish and Portuguese, too. Things of this gets out. We can kiss goodbye to discipline back home. See a bit of fun, ladies. Get down. to kill him myself. I'm afraid you will have to wait, my friend, until we have all the gold we can get. Right. Come on, Sharpie. You know that officer? No, nor he me. I stood beside him for a few seconds in the back. Of a hero when he took an eagle off the frogs. Not that you remember. Officers don't see other ranks. Don't you want your gold, deserter? Deserter? You call me a deserter? And what else would I call a dog like you? Die, damn deserter! My name is Captain Richard Sharp. 
95th Regiment in the Army of Wellington. You're not a deserter. We're here on the same mission, monsieur. This was their idea of a joke, to make us fight each other. They're probably watching us from somewhere up there. Arthur, leave him! Jean! Games are over. You want your gold? Bring the ladies. I'm chef de bataillon Michel du Breton. Colonel, eh? You speak good English. My wife is English. You have a hostage here. My wife. Do they know that you're her husband? So glad you could make it, Sharpie. How's your back, laddie? Who is he? His name is Hakeswell. Obadiah Hakeswell. Had me flogged once. Had Sergeant Harper flogged. Not so long ago, I tried to rape my wife. I swore I'd kill him. How's your Spanish oar, Sharpie? Shoot and your marshal dies. Now! Now! Mes amis, let him go. Let him go! My friends, let us not fight. Let us eat. Bien? Spicy. C'est bon. C'est très bon. That's the wrong. He calls himself Marshal Portofeu. He is a cook. Livre. A good one. Separate la chair des eaux. Fait marronner toute la nuit dans du vin rouge et de l'ail. Fait en sous cuir au bon mari pendant deux heures. Et sert chaud avec une larme d'huile d'olive. Not for the floggy talk, Sharpie. If you want the women, give me the gold. Hostage. Tried to escape. Branding her with a hot iron. Hurts a lot. Wanna see the women, Sharpie? Follow me. Funny thing, Sharpie. We've got an English woman for this floggy colonel here. And an half-breed Portuguese for your English Colonel Farthingdale. Funny that. Dupont. Right. This one's yours, Colonel. But no froggy talk. One word in frog and she goes straight back to her cell. Talk English like a Christian. Madame, I'm Colonel Beauchamp. And I have the honor to know your husband, Colonel Du Breton. He sends you his love. I trust my husband as well, Colonel. He worries a lot about you, madam. And you? I am withering in my bloom. Lost in solitary gloom, Colonel Beauchamp. Solitary gloom. 
No wonder your husband loves you so much, madam. As bright as your beautiful. Isn't that nice? Now, sharp his turn. Bring out Lady Fardendale! Captain Sharp of the 95th, madam. I'm Isabella, Lady Fardendale. I've come to take you home, my lady. Oh, no, Sharpe. We've changed our mind. We want double the amount. We've paid you. That buys the lady's virtue. But only for five days. You come back here, same time, same place, with double the amount of gold, Sharpe. And if we do come back with the gold, how do we know you'll release them then? You'll just have to take my word for it. And if you're a minute late, we'll bust them. Pass them around the boys. And a good busting it'll be too. Show them your goodies, my lady. Stripper! Oh, I know you. There you are. Battle of Televera. I know your name in a tick. No names for the fighting squad, Sharpie. Stripper! Let the frogs do it. No! If you want to shame somebody, shame me. Show Sharpie what you've got, my lady. Sharp here, I'll soft you flog around the convent. Strip your body, Smithy. My compliments, ma'am. Shall I give your regards to your husband? Sit sharp on your way, boy. Take him away! I have a message from General Wellington. Who's <laughs> <laughs> the General Wellington promises that he will hang every man who does not present himself at our outpost by New Year's Day. Five days, Sharpie. Life is a calm woman, yet she seemed a little hysterical. Even quoted poetry, withering in my bloom, lost in solitary gloom. Do you know the poem? No. Well, when you get back to your people, please ask someone who does. Why? I think it's some kind of message. A message for you is no concern of mine, Colonel. Well, it may help if you are planning to rescue Lady Farthingdale. And you? You're not planning to rescue your wife, too? I would die for her. My superiors will not allow me to risk French lives in an attempt to rescue my English wife. Colonel du Breton. So what are you going to do, Colonel? My escort. I must go. And I'm without rank. Tell the Colonel what to do. Don't you have majors who tell generals what to do, Captain? Be careful. This is the man who would abandon my wife. He has no honor. Who's the English officer? Je vous présente le capitaine. I speak English, de Breton. And I'm sure this Englishman has no French. My name is Ducot. Major Ducot. 
you. Captain Richard Sharp, 95th Regiment, Rifles. You are the shot that stole an Imperial Eagle at the Battle of Talavera? Steel is a strong word, sir. I found it in the middle of a French column. Where I come from, it's a case of finders keepers. Come, Colonel. We've wasted enough time in Adrados. It was a fool's errand in the first place. Fool's errand? That man's wife is held hostage, sir. What is he to do? Find another as you will have to if your wife ever falls into my hands. Tell Teresa Moreno that you would suffer the fate of all whores if she ever falls into the hands of France. You're a dead man, Duco. You're a spy, Duco. And not a very good one. When I get back, I shall tell my superiors that the French are a special agent in this area. And when my wife catches you behind our lines, You'll die like a dog, sir. Adieu, Monsieur Duco. you answer a simple question. Was Lady Fathingdale pretty? Maybe, if you like that kind of look. Did you notice her, Harper? Oh, I did, so I did. She's uh, slender, but she's uh, shapely too, if you know what I mean. Mm. Harper, I have half a bottle of the best Irish whiskey from the Irish priests at Salamanca. You speak a word and you're dead, Harper. I'll be dead, but so I'll be drunk. May God forgive me for telling you this, miss, but Lady Fartingale was made to strip off naked in front of Mr. Sharp in order that he'd take pity on her, miss. When are you going back for her? Who says I'm going back for her? You do by not speaking about her. Withering in my bloom, lost in solitary gloom. It's me to a teapot. My report, sir. I'm sorry we failed to bring back Lady Farthingdale, sir. Never mind about Lady Farthingdale for now. What matters to me is that you managed to smoke out that damn dog, Major Duco. Well done, Sharp. Duco is a very bad boy. Has the ear of Bonaparte himself. Where Duco rides, dirty work is sure to follow. He's scouting for an attack in the north. I can smell it. Oh, we can't be sure of that, sir. And in the meantime, we have Lady Farthingdale to worry about. <laughs> Wellington's tent at six. Spit and polish for Sir Augustus Farthingdale. He'll want a full written report, Sharp. Lances? No. Rocket troops, sir. Yeah, I know that. But they look like lances. Could even call them cavalry to pinch. Well, in a bad light. Lances? No, sir, I really must protest. We are the rocket troop, not cavalry, man. Lances. That's not what the rocket troop is trained to do, sir. What we do best is shoot rockets. Would you like to watch us have another go at that barn, sir? No. Well, we almost hit it this morning, and I have one ready. Primed and aimed at myself, sir. All ready to go. No! Fuse! Hey! No! No! Oh dear.
Does that mean you'll not be able to find a use for us, Mr. Sharp? Oh, I'll find a use for you, Mr. Gillian. Don't you worry about that. Rocket troop, reload! So, you failed. That failure was no fault of Sharp's, Colonel Farthingdale. I wish I could be assured, my lord. The fact is that Sharp was sent for my wife, and my wife is not here. And the court in Lisbon will want to know why. This is a very shoddy affair, sir. And I shall hold you personally responsible. We may both be held responsible sooner than you think, Sir Augustus. Not merely for losing your wife, but for losing Spain. But what do you mean, sir? Major Nairn. I want to make three points, Sir Augustus. First, about the Dragos. We thought we were dealing with a bunch of desperados, but from what Sharp reports, we're dealing with a small army, many in British uniform, murdering the Spanish inhabitants. This threatens our alliance with Spain. Second, can you imagine what this will do to the morale of our troops coming up to a cold Christmas? A scuttlebutt tells you there's a Garden of Eden up in the hills, good food, good grog, no foot drill or flogging. Wouldn't you say, well, I'd be damned to it and desert? I know I would. Disciplined troops desert, sir. Nonsense. Don't be a damn fool, sir. Discipline is only a rabble rouser shout from anarchy, sir. Mark me close, Colonel. What do you think the supreme virtue, sir? To the Frenchman in his recent revolution, it is liberty. To the Whig, puffing in Parliament, it is licensed to do anything provided do not disturb his pleasure. But to the common soldier, it is anarchy to do whatever he please and be damned to his fellow. But to me and Bonaparte, the supreme virtue is order. We are not Whigs. We know that a man may love his neighbor of a Monday and massacre him of a Tuesday unless society keeps him in order. These deserters, if not secured and shot, will destroy my army more surely than Bonaparte. And I'll thank you not to forget it. You had a third point, Nevin. Third, Sharp reports that Colonel Dupleton told him he was being advised by a Major Ducot. Uh, Ducot is a very bad hat, Sir Augustus. How do you know? Why, he's in the same line of work as me, sir. But why should Dupleton warn you about Ducot? Dupleton is torn between his country and his wife. He would not betray France but he fears Duco may attack Adridos without regard to his wife's safety. We think Duco was scouting not for an attack, but for an invasion. An invasion? They could send a strong force to take Adradas as if they were merely dealing with the deserters. But I think they mean to hold on to Adradas and use it as a funnel to pour their army into Portugal. Yes, but if the French attack, the, the deserters will uh, we'll kill the hostages. Duco doesn't give a damn about the hostages. We need to take Adradas before he does. But if we send in a strong force, the deserters will kill your wife. Oh, I'm sorry, Sir Augustus, it's not your fault, but human nature being what it is and not what the Whigs think it is, you must expect to shoulder some of the blame for this back in London. You know the kind of thing they'll say. How did that damn fellow Farthingdale allow his wife to be kidnapped in the first place? That kind of thing, you, <laughs> you follow me, don't you, sir? What do you suggest, my lord? Sharp is the one with the suggestion. He has put forward a rescue plan that is foolhardy and certainly not for the faint-hearted. But it might do. But how do we know the women are in the convent? Colonel Dubreton's wife is English. When asked how she was, she replied, Withering in my bloom, lost in solitary gloom. It's from a poem by Alexander Pope called Eloise and Abelard. Now warm in love, now withering in thy bloom, lost in a convent's solitary gloom. The shepherds told me the convent means the upper balcony. It's where the nuns used to sleep. Now, if we can hold the balcony, well armed and with plenty of ammunition, we can secure the women's safety until the crack company arrives. And of course, you will be following close behind with the main rescue party, Sir Augustus. <clears throat> yes, well, naturally, I shall be leading the regimental rescue. 
I don't see a role for you, Sharp. A detachment cannot be led by a captain. It must have a major in command. Rules. May I have your word that you will support fully the major in command of the detachment? Absolutely, sir. Major Nan, read that letter from the Prince Regent in respect of Captain Sharp. Prince Regent? It seems Sharp has friends at court too, Colonel. Though in London, not in Lisbon. Seems the Prince Regent read all about Sharp taking that eagle at Televera and has followed his career since. Read it, Nan. George III, by the grace of God of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, King, Defender of the Faith, etc., 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 to our trusty and well-beloved Richard Sharp Esquire, greeting. We do by these presents constitute and appoint you to be major in our army now in Portugal and Spain and blah, 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 blah. Congratulations, Major Sharp. And of course, as Major, you may now command the detachment. All in order now, Colonel? Well, of course, it's not my place to question the judgment of the Prince Regent. All I do know is that the Major here, who is in charge of a complex and combined operation, cannot rise to the purchase of a watch. You may borrow mine, sir. See you return it. Attention! My lord, if you'll excuse me. Why do you think you can slip into a Drados without challenge? I mean to go in on Christmas Eve, sir. Capital idea. They'll be dead drunk. About that crack company, sir? 60th Rifles. They'll be here by sunset under a Captain Fredrickson. Will Teresa... Commandante Moreno be riding with us as far as the river, sir? No. A Major Nairn is sending her northwest to scout the frontier for the French. Best you say farewell to her now, Major Sharp. Dismiss. Yes, sir. Fairly dangerous business, eh? Your new command. Sort them out, Sergeant. Help them, Mr. Cooper. These poor souls don't know Mr. Sharp, do they, Sergeant Arthur? They don't, Mr. Cooper. They don't know Mr. Sharp saved Wellington's life. Do they, Sergeant Arthur? They don't, Mr. Hagman. They don't know Mr. Sharp shot three dragoons out of the saddle in 30 seconds, do they, Sergeant Harper? They certainly don't, Mr. Harris. I bet they don't know Mr. Sharp shot a man just for having rust on his trigger. I eh? don't, Mr. Hagman. I bet they don't know Mr. Sharp shot an officer just for having dust on his buttons. What was it Mr. Sharp says makes a good soldier, Mr. Cooper? Remind me again, Sarge. What Major Sharp says makes a good soldier is the ability to be able to fire three rounds a minute in any weather. You must remember that. Shush, boys. Here he comes. The devil himself. Rifles! Present! Arm! 60th Rifles reporting for duty. Sir! Advance! Arm! Your men are dirty and scruffy and a damn disgrace. What's your name, mister? Captain Fredrickson, sir. No apologies about your men. Men are dirty, sir. Rifles are clean.
You were smart on that, Sergeant. Nothing, sir. Sorry, sir. A good soldier should have a reason before he suffers himself to smile. Name? Rosner, sir. You know what makes a good soldier, Rosner? Yes, sir. The ability to fire off three rounds a minute in any weather, sir. Are you smiling at Fredrickson? I'm not smiling, sir. A musket ball broke my jaw. I have false teeth. The saw bone stuck on the smile for free, sir. Also stuck on my hair. Hair belongs to a horse, sir. Do you know what makes a good soldier, Captain Fredrickson? Yes, sir. Keeping his mouth shut when he's asked unfull questions by a superior officer, sir. You don't give a damn, dear Fredrickson. No, sir. I just do my duty, sir. You'll do fine. Stand easy, Fredrickson. Who's your best shot? Taylor, sir. Right, Taylor. A shilling says you can't beat even a raw recruit to the chosen men. Perkins, give me that. Right, Taylor. Make ready. Well, would you believe it? Perkins put his bullets straight through the same hole made by Taylor. <laughs> Tell me, Fredrickson, what do the lads really call you? They're behind your back, I mean. Sweet William. <laughs> <laughs> This isn't the figure for it. Thomas, <laughs> sir, it's not fair. It's always me. I must protest, sir. My rockets are being robbed of their powder. We were brought here under false pretenses. I really must protest, sir. It's either that or wear a dress, rocket man. Like what you see, you can go on guard duty. Don't you worry, Lady Farthingdale. You'll get plenty of time to show your charms. Uh. You want another goose to plot, boys? Soon as Sharpie gets back and we've slit his gizzard. Take you downstairs and you can join the dance. Murderer. <laughs> Want to see you at six sharp? Yes, sir. Merry Christmas, sir. 
good luck. Keep it up, Perkins. That's not just Ramona's best dress, it's her only dress. <laughs> This one, will you? He down to Dragonic, Talavera. I didn't remember that when they flogged me, sir. Yes, but I remembered. Didn't I, Kelly? Pass, friend. door. Not many, but enough to protect you till dawn. That what was happening at dawn? Hopefully a crack company arrives and we're afraid to rescue. I knew everything would be all right as soon as I saw you. You haven't changed much in three years, you know. I've risen in the ranks, though. Much like you, my lady. So tell me, how did you get to become the wife of such an important man? I was mistress to a duke. When Sir Augustus took a fancy to me, my duke managed to pass me off as some kind of distant relation. A whore to a duchess, eh? Sir Augustus is a snob. 
by the time he found out I was a whore, it was too late, and he had to keep my little history a secret. So why did he bring you to Spain? To hide me, I suppose. A few questions asked here. How long is it from dawn? Three hours. This is my husband's watch. He loaned it me for the night. Might I suggest a similar arrangement in regard to um, another piece of his property? You can maybe call it a debt of honor. I have another woman now. Yes, but she's not here. Do you know morals? Have you read Voltaire? Yes. He's very sensible about sharpshooters. Well, he's more sensible about morals. Voltaire says, I have no morals. Yet I'm a very moral person. And that's how I think I am. That's how I think you are too. I'll stay here, find out what's going on. You ride south. Tell Sharp a strong reconnaissance force of frogs is on its way to Caesar Dragus. He is to hold the village at all costs until Sir Augustus comes up with reinforcements. What kind of force is he facing? A regiment, at least. So I was right. A Dragus does have strategic importance. So, if the deserters don't get him by dawn, we can look forward to seeing the French by sunset. And even when Sir Augustus arrives, he'll still be at number 10 to 1. I wish I had your ears, Macduff. I'd give a lot to know what that devil Duco is thinking. Faites-moi le plaisir d'oublier votre femme. Vous devez penser à la France. Je suis persuadé que le général Chaumier m'approuve. Ce que je n'approuve pas ce matin, du coup, c'est votre tenue. Donnez-moi une dernière chance de sauver ma femme. Vous nous faites perdre du temps. Nous devons attaquer maintenant. Madame du Breton est une femme charmante. Je crois que nous allons donner un peu de temps au colonel pour qu'il puisse la monnayer. Oui, en général, c'est inutile. Cette femme est perdue. Dommage que ce ne soit pas la mienne. Au revoir, du Breton.
I locked up an hour ago, sir. Good man. Chosen man, Kelly. Hicksworth's taking Isabella. Sharp is all. Put that pistol down, lassie, and I'll blow Lady Farthingdale's brains out. Save yourself. Shoot him! <laughs> Put down your pistol. Shoot Lady Farvingdale, and I will hand you over to Captain Sharp. I surrender myself to you, sir. Deal with me how you will. But don't hand me over to Sharp. Agreed. Captain Sharp. Captain Sharp. <laughs> You give your word, sir. I'll deal with you myself. And I will. <laughs> Twenty dead and Higgs will not amongst him. Isabella gone. I'll be lucky to get away with a court martial. It was a brave stand. You did well. That's what you should tell the fop. Where is my wife, Sharp? Major Nansa. I'm sorry, Sharp. your daughter. Time I was in my way. Please. Please don't go. You, you never stop me from doing what I must do. me free.
truly sorry, monsieur. This is the man who killed your wife. A liar. A thief. A rapist. A murderer. That's not a man. Take it away. Vous allez bien, madame. Je vais très bien, monsieur. I am Major Ducot, special envoy of General Chaumier, who's camped a few miles away. I have a message for the commander of Adrados. You must excuse Major Sharp. His wife has just been killed. What is the message? General Chaumier's compliments. You have one hour to surrender the village of Adrados. I will tell Major Sharp when he's more composed. Thank you, Major Ducot. Naturally, I would have liked to express my regrets to Major Sharp on the death of his wife. But not when his wife was the Spanish whore who waged war on France. Tell General Shawmere, we will fight him to the death. Major Sharp is not well. We outnumber you ten to one. There will be no terms if you do not surrender within the hour. I'm in charge here, Major Sharp. We shall discuss terms immediately. Your wife was a whore, sir. I know, for I was once her lover. Let that get out, and we'll be the laughing stock of Lisbon, and then of London. Leave now, and on my honor, no word of it will pass my lips. But I do love her, you know. You're a damned liar. To the death. Colonel Dubreton, since Major Sharp is so determined, we will not demean ourselves by begging for your wife. Madam. Merci, monsieur. Tell General Chaumier I have horse, foot, and artillery. Tell him what Voltaire said. 
Dieu n'est pas pour le gros bataillon, mais pour ce qui tire le mur. You told me you didn't speak French. I lied. My wife told me. She told me many things. Above all, how to say goodbye. Sharp, a hundred men, but where's your horse and artillery? Rifles, make ready. Fire. The English major reads Voltaire, madame? Yes. And he's very clever. You see how he buries his wife on the hills, Duco? He's telling us he'll be buried beside her rather than give up the position. He is bluffing. He has no more than a hundred men, General. Beg pardon, General, but he has horse, foot, and artillery. He said so, didn't he, dear? He said so, certainly. He lies. I saw no cavalry or artillery. He is bluffing. And so are we, Ducot. This is merely a reconnaissance force. I have infantry, but no cavalry or artillery. My orders tell me I must retire if I meet serious resistance. My orders from Paris are to press the British before the new year. I say attack now, sir. Major Ducot. I am willing to attack on your assurance the English have neither cavalry or artillery. But I want it in writing. Of course, General. I take full responsibility. And of course, I also take credit for its success. When we advance in line, each pea is apart, and it is very hard to pick up one pea with a fork. 
But to eat the peas, we move them together, like so. And then, we pick them all up. And how would Major Sharp go about moving all your peas together? Cavalry. But Ducot says he has no cavalry. Maybe you have misunderstood, my dear lady. Mon Dieu. Mr. Gillian, rocket artillery, prepare for bombardment. Fire! Use this. Good shooting, sweet William. Well done, Mr. Gillian. I'll be damned if we don't reach the moon someday with one of your blasted rockets. <laughs> <laughs> Sir.
traveled far from Spain, a part of me shall still remain. For you are with me night and day, and over the hills and far away, o'er the hills and o'er the main, through Flanders, Portugal, and Spain. King George commands and we obey, over the hills and far away.